everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gang, what's up? Just Aaron right here, Canadian Looney. Like, subscribe, share, get notified. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the tub scandal, the tub comment scandal. It's pretty crazy. Uh, MP Garnet Genu said something in the House Commons the other day. We've got it all right here. We're gonna hear what Trudeau said, what Poliev said, and then all of the people that come out to defend the Prime Minister at the end, and then Garnet Genu defending himself. There's a lot of Greg Ferguson in this one, a lot of awkward silences and pauses. Things are wild in the House of Commons, guys. No joke, let's get right into it. Like, subscribe, share, get notified, all those fun things. Let's take a look at this. I saw a comment on one spectacular uh, social housing project of his, and that is the brand new lavish apartment that he bought his friend, the new Consul General, to New York. Nine million dollars for our, his friend Tom Clark to have stunning powder room finished in jewel onyx, crystal gold quartzite countertops, a handcrafted copper soaking tub, custom bronze bathroom fixtures, $5,000 coffee machine. Did the Prime Minister go and inspect this palace in the sky on his recent trip to New York? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, engaging with international leaders on fighting climate change, on solving global crises, on standing up unequivocally for Ukraine. <laughs> colleagues, colleagues, just as I said before, as just as I said earlier, I would ask all members to please not take the floor unless they're recognized by the speaker so that we can hear the questions and we can hear the answers. The Right Honourable Prime Minister from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, don't worry, on this side of the House, we're used to casual homophobic comments from the other side of the House. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Now we're going to see some people come out to try to defend and attack the Conservatives, but defend uh, Trudeau and say that these comments were so inappropriate. It might have just been a funny comment. Who am I to say? Anyway, let's take a look at how it went down. I see that there are some members who are rising on a point of order. I recognize the Honourable Member from Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, well, we appreciate that you were, uh, have acknowledged and ruled that the Leader of the Opposition was out of order last Thursday. We are confused by the mixed messaging that you've sent to this House. The member was out of order and yet has still been allowed to participate in debate and today have five questions in question period. The regular practice is that a member isn't recognized to speak until they have withdrawn and that is not being applied and we have some concerns about the, the mixed messages. I'd also like to remind the Speaker of the very serious matter that was raised yesterday regarding the member for Fort Saskatchewan Sherwood Park. We are still waiting for him to withdraw and apologize for his homophobic and disgusting comment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. member from uh, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, is rising on his feet, and I will recognize him in due turn, but I understand on the same point of order so that the member doesn't have to get up twice. Uh, the Honourable Member, uh, Parliamentary Secretary uh, for the Government House Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I would just want to add a couple thoughts to it. We have to put into proper perspective when a member is requested by the Speaker's Chair to withdraw the remarks, as it's been pointed out, they are required to do so. If they do not, Speakers have 
not identify them until they do the apology. We can give ample examples of that. We cannot allow a a second tier of a member of parliament that he is allowed or he or she is allowed to violate the rules and then it is the political party that pays the consequence. That's in fact what we saw here. There was the Conservative Party that lost the three questions. There was no penalty to the member from um, the leader of the Conservative Party. That causes a great deal of concern for all parliamentarians. I'm going to move, uh, before I move to the member from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, because I can understand his motivation and wanting to stand up, uh, the Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary, as well as to the, uh, uh, the member from Edmonton, Strathcona, the Speaker has made a uh, ruling on this decision. I would encourage uh, all members to read it very carefully. As you know, when there is uh, uh, something that contributes Article 18, there is, uh, the Speaker has some discretion as to what to do. And so the Speaker has certainly uh, considered this question, has been in contact with, and had many discussions. And uh, I would encourage the honourable members to read the session. If they wish to challenge the ruling of this chair, they know uh, the procedure in which to provide. The honourable member. Then I see that the Honourable Member from uh, Winnipeg's uh, South Centre is rising on a point of order. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I just wanted to draw your attention uh, for the benefit of the House to some language I've heard used that I, I think is unbecoming of uh, this House and of members in this House. And I have no interest in ascribing blame or pointing fingers, so I'm not going to name names, Mr. Speaker. However, there has been reference over the course of debate in the House in the past few days in particular to pagers exploding walkie-talkies exploding, reference to perhaps members in this House themselves having that type of technology, which is an obvious reference to the conflict that is uh, happening in the Middle East right now, Mr. Speaker. I heard another comment from a member today uh, that, uh, and I quote, did you get a thank you letter from Hezbollah? This is to an Israeli uh, member of this House who has lost loved ones, innocent loved ones in the conflict. We have other members of this chamber from all sides, Mr. Speaker, who have lost innocent people by virtue of the conflict that is taking place. I, again, am not interested interested in being partisan. I simply want to draw your attention to this and call upon the better angels in this House to conduct themselves on behalf of Canadians and one another with compassion and dignity. Thank you. I thank the Honourable Member uh, for Winnipeg South Centre for uh, a thoughtful intervention. And I'll take this opportunity to remind all members of the House that the most important thing that we can do, despite pursuing the interests of our constituents passionately and pointedly, but is to make sure that there is a fundamental respect between all members. This is a point that the Chair has made, that Chair occupants have made at several occasions. J'encourage tous les députés. I would encourage all members to be nicer and more respectful of one another so that we can have uh, debates that are passionate and interesting to uh, represent the interests of constituents across the country. On Sherwood Park is Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, my, my mistake, is rising uh, on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I just want to say briefly that, as members know, the NDP whip in particular has a history of making false and defamatory comments about me, and this is no exception. It's very clear... That Colleagues, if you please can keep your comments to yourself so that the chair can listen to this point of order being raised by the member from Sherwood Park for Saskatchewan, who, who was referenced in some other point of orders. I think it is fair to allow him to raise his point of order uninterrupted to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There was an exchange yesterday in question period about extravagant spending by the government. $9 million spent on a luxury condo on Billionaire's Row. Now, the Leader of the Opposition asked a question... Speaker, I can't hear him. I can't hear him, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker I hear him. false or defamatory comments you, have been made about me. If members want to hear a response, I'll provide a response. The Leader of the Opposition 
pointed out $9 million spent on this extravagant condo and identified a number of luxury features associated with that condo, including an extremely luxurious bathtub. Following that, the Prime Minister made no comment whatsoever about those features. Instead, the Prime Minister uh, spoke about the kinds of international engagement that the government does. And as the Hansard clearly... So, colleagues, 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 I'm going to ask the Honourable Member, uh, please, if, if... I'm going to ask... I'm going to ask the Honourable Member, please, to get to his point, because it's very important that we try to get to the point so that it's not perceived as engaging in debate. I'm trying to make sure. Mr. Speaker, false and defamatory comments have been made about me. Yep. I'm providing a response, and, and hopefully members will, will benefit from reviewing the context of what happened. Yep. $9 million were spent on a luxury condo on Billionaires Row in New York. In a question from the Leader of the Opposition, various luxury... Okay, colleagues, if we... If a member is... If the member has been... A, colleagues... So I'm going to invite the uh, I'm going to invite the honourable member from for, uh, from Sherwood Park Forest, Saskatchewan. He was almost there. I'd ask him, please, just immediately get to the point so that uh, we can address the allegations which were made against the honourable member, and then we can move on in the house. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And we've heard a few words said in this House about bullying. I'm trying to provide an explanation with context and to answer false allegations that have been made against me, and I will persist in, in, in doing that. So following questions from the Leader of the Opposition about a $9 million luxury condo purchased by the government, and in particular identifying among the features of that condo a luxury bathtub, the, the Prime Minister ignored reference to those features and instead spoke about the engagement done by the government internationally. And the Hansard shows the exchange. And many of the comments about, uh, uh, made on Twitter about what was allegedly said don't reflect what's in the Hansard. The Hansard notes, does he engage with them in the bathtub? The point of that comment is to illustrate that, of course, meetings don't take place in a bathtub. Luxury, a luxurious bathtub has nothing to do with meetings. The Prime Minister's answer had nothing to do with the questions, but it had nothing to do with sex. I wasn't thinking about sex at all. The Honourable Member from uh, James Bay, Timmins James Bay is rising on a point of order. Speaker, I'll keep my remarks to a minute. I hope you'll I'm let me finish. TA, we saw the, the, uh, the tape. I've listened to the tape. What we didn't hear was an apology. So I just want to understand that the Speaker is saying that a Conservative member can make a homosexual slur against the Prime Minister of the country and it's okay and he can defend himself for a good 10 minutes speaking. Is that the standard that we have in the House? We would like to know that yeah. that's the standard that this Speaker is bringing right. because it very much clarifies where we go from here. The Honourable, uh, I mean, on point of order, I see that the Honourable Member from Don Valley West is rising. I hope this will be a, 
that, that I, I hope that this will be uh, germane to the issue at hand and then we're going to speak the chair will go back and consider this and come back to the house if necessary the honorable member thank you mr speaker uh, yesterday a point of order was raised uh, and I'm a little confused, so it's a true point of order because the member from Edmonton, Susquehanna, has raised essentially a new point of order, but referred to the yesterday's point of order. However, to be victimized once in this House is sufficient. To be re-victimized again by someone pretending, and we all heard it, and it is in Hansard, what was said, it is a homophobic slur. There were two of them, and they were both absolutely personal. And if the Consul General in New York were a woman, yep. if she was uh, treated that way in this House, this House would be outraged. Right Every member of this right House off. should be outraged right because off. it was a homophobic slur, and I want you to take it under consideration. Right on. Right So, colleagues, colleagues, I think this is. I appreciate the points of view. Uh, raised by uh, the members. I appreciate the Honourable Member from getting up and offering uh, his perspective. I th the Chair is going to uh, obviously take this matter under advisement, but I will just say this, which I think is really important, is how it is very necessary that when members are not... The, one of the best ways to, to avoid these kind of situations is is to making sure that members don't speak out of turn. And then that way, we don't have a situation where there is different interpretations as to what was said. I thank all honourable members for rising on this issue. The Chair will uh, go back and consider this and come back to the House if necessary. Thank you. <coughs> Point of order, the honourable member from Winnipeg Centre. I have real, uh, Mr. Speaker, with all due respect, I have real issue with this. Uh, because on two occasions, once before the House rose, you let a Conservative member liken somebody's racial background for criminally... Uh, for the the Honourable Member is raising uh, an issue which was brought up and decided by the Chair in a decision that was made by last week. I'll invite the Honourable Member to sit down and then and to take a look at the ruling that is here. I'm moving on. I wish to inform the House that the volume of airpieces... Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, gang, it is pretty crazy on the House of Commons floor these days. Come and watch our live show. We cover this stuff live. We do a broadcast stream daily of the question periods. It's a really fun chat room. Come and check it out. It's a great community. My name's Aaron, this is Canadian Looney, and we do a lot of things around question period and Canadian federal politics. Liking and uh, learning and trying to share that with our audience, it's great. Come and join us for one of the live shows. Uh, the House of Commons is wacky, guys. Canadian Looney, we're out. Thanks for watching this video. Catch you next time.